Welcome to Insure Talk. Today I would like to talk about an important principle of insurance, the principle of subrogation. What is subrogation? When does it become applicable and how does it work? Subrogation is a, as a concept is based on the legal principle of equity. Equitable subrogation allows one party to replace another party when it comes to a legal right. For the principle of subrogation to apply, there has to be a subrogatable interest in the claim for the insurer to pursue. How does a claim become subrogatable? In certain claims, a third party is responsible for the loss or damage that has happened to the subject matter of your insurance. Once such claims are settled, they become subrogatable. A letter of subrogation is collected by the insurer prior to settlement. For example, uh, in a marine cargo claim, the loss or damage to cargo could have happened due to the negligence of the carrier or the transporter. So after paying the claim to the insured, the insurer is entitled to stand in the shoes of the insured and enforce the insured's rights against the carrier who is responsible for the loss. The insurer can then recover a compensatory amount from the carrier to the extent of the claim he has paid. He cannot recover anything more than that. The claim doesn't become subrogatable if the insured himself was negligent and caused the loss. Subrogation can, cannot be exercised by the insurer against the insured himself after paying the claim. This would render the insurance itself meaningless. So there has to be a third party who is responsible for the loss. In legal terms, he is known as the third party tort fees. Can subrogation be waived? There can be some situations where the exercise of subrogation rights by the insurer can be problematic to the insured. There can be subrogation conflicts. An example is when the third party involved is a related party, such as a subsidiary of the insured. In such cases, the insured would be in a difficult situation uh, trying to sue his own sister company. Another example can be of contractual relationships. There can be uh, operations and maintenance contracts or concession contractors engaged by the client. When the insured is expected to hold the, uh, in such cases, the insured may be expected to hold the contractor harmless. So in such cases, subrogation would not be enforceable. So where there is such situations of subrogation conflict, there has to be a prior agreement with the insurer at the time of taking insurance to waive subrogation rights. If you don't do that and uh, the insurer is unwilling to forego his recovery rights at the time of loss, then the claims can get stuck. So careful consideration must be given to possible subrogation conflicts while buying insurance and obtain suitable waivers where necessary. Thank you.